first is um, this is an absolute scandal that we're all sitting here tonight listening to this kind of chilling assessment of what might happen in our national park. Um, I never really ever thought that I'd find myself standing here to uh, a room full of um, Lake District residents seriously talking about the prospect of nuclear waste under a national park. It is a scandal. It's born of political expediency. And if we do nothing in the rest of our lives, we've got to make sure this doesn't happen under our national park. Uh, really, who've actually realised that this is an absolute disaster in the making, and it's happening on our watch, unfortunately, and it will happen unless people in this room, and furthermore, people on a nationwide basis, actually do something about this. Otherwise, it seriously could well happen in our national park. 75% of the area that's under consideration now is in our national park. Anyway, uh, on to my presentation. Um, the first thing I'd like to say, uh, as, as Stephen uh, you know, quite rightly said, uh, I'm not anti Sellafield. Uh, I've got many friends that work at Sellafield, family, colleagues who work there, uh, and many of my clients in my day job, um, their businesses are reliant on Sellafield. So you know, I, I resent, and in fact, I'm extremely angry about some of the things that have been said by some of the politicians in Copeland about people like myself speaking out about this issue. I'm as Cumbrian as anybody, and I defy somebody to find somebody that's more passionate about the area than myself, and I'm entitled to an opinion. And as far as, as, far as um, the nuclear industry is concerned, as a general principle, I'm not anti Sellafield. I want to see the nuclear waste legacy that's been so thoughtlessly left by previous generations tied it up safely. I'd like to see a bit of value for money for the UK taxpayer as well. I get a bit concerned when I find that 10 people are earning, uh, what was it, 25 million pounds per annum, most of them Americans. Things like that concern me a little bit. But anyway, as a general principle, I support the Sellafield business, its workforce and West Cumbria, and indeed all of Cumbria, in safely decommissioning the nuclear legacy. However, this support is conditional and it has to be conditional. Firstly, it's conditional upon safety always remaining paramount. Secondly, it's conditional upon the nuclear industry playing its part, but not becoming completely dominating throughout our economy and our community. Throughout my lifetime, we've seen Sellafield take a disproportionately strong grasp on the West Cumberland economy, and effectively that's been encouraged by, by certainly, in my opinion, London politicians, and to some extent by the ineptitude of our local politicians, which has meant that we've ended up with what is, let's be honest, a fairly malleable and nuclear-friendly community, in particular in Copeland. But thirdly, my support is conditional upon, as I've said before, the nuclear industry not being beyond appropriate challenge. We have to be able to challenge something as important as the nuclear industry. And I passionately believe that Cumbrian support for the nuclear industry should most definitely not, to, not extend to supporting anything with the word nuclear in it. It should be possible to challenge, and it should be possible to do so without being labelled anti-nuclear, anti-West Cumbrian, etc, etc. I came across an interesting quote from a, a fellow that knew one or two things, um, and that's what he had to say about people who just go along with, um, uh, with, with the flow, if you like. You have to challenge things. Unthinking respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Ask the people of Fukushima whether they agree. So I'm not anti-nuclear, but there are conditions and parameters to that support, and I believe they have to be for any true Cumbrian. We've learned a little bit tonight about uh, NIREX. Uh, I'm going to touch on NIREX. Sorry that I'm covering common ground that people know about, but as you can see, um, you know what the slide says, you know, we can learn from the past. NIREX in the 80s and 90s was a government-owned company looking for a nuclear waste repository. As Stephen says, they spent about 400 million in old money. That's around a billion in today's money. They searched nationally, and in the process, they identified vast, and I mean vast, tracts of suitable geology, mainly in eastern England, in an area that really comes down from an arc, from the wash, um, skirts around 
Northamptonshire, Bedfordshire into East Anglia. Now, how do you determine suitable geology? Well, they actually follow the internationally recognised guidelines and principles for a repository. But, which, wait for it, this is, this is quite good. The first thing you look for is an area of no relief, okay? Low relief, i.e. no mountains. And the second thing is simple geology. Now, as any first year student of geology will tell you, the Lake District is very geologically complex. That's why it's been studied for hundreds of years. That's why geologists come from all over the world to look at the Lake District, because it is so complex, it's geology. But anyway, despite finding better sites elsewhere in the country, Narex ended up choosing a site at Longlands Farm, the Cosforth near Sellafield. Why? Well, I think you know the answer to that. It was partially because of its proximity to Sellafield and the waste, and secondly, and this was admitted, it was because, effectively, there was a malleable community. Sound familiar? They applied for planning permission for an, in, an initial facility called a rock characterization facility. It, in essence, this was a precursor to a repository. They were denied planning permission by Cumbria County Council. Now, that's the same Cumbria County Council that's just expressed an interest in a repository 12 years later. And essentially, they, they were turned down planning permission. And the reasons that they were turned down planning permission was because Cumbria won its argument that essentially the process should be treated as if it, it were a repository, because quite frankly they were spending hundreds of millions of pounds on it in old money, and they weren't looking anywhere else. So it, it, a bit like potentially today, it was the elephant in the room, um, nowhere else has been looked at, so they said you've got to treat it as if it was an application for a repository. They lost, Nirex lost, Cumbria County Council, supported very interestingly and quite strongly making claims for uh, the, important, uh, the, the important thing was to get the right site, safety was paramount, even if it meant losing jobs in the local economy, Copeland Borough Council. Anyway, they lost, Narex lost, the appeal inspector, a very brave man called uh, McDonald, essentially stood up to the nuclear industry and the government. He said the site selection wasn't rational, there were better sites in eastern England, the West Cumbrian geology was too complex, and essentially their models didn't work, as Stephen said. <coughs> so Nirex, Nirex got, all, got a lot wrong. So what? Well, the thing I want to talk about now is what Nirex did right. The one thing Nirex got right was at the very beginning of their site selection process, when they had about five or 600 sites in the UK, they ruled out any sites which were environmentally sensitive areas including national parks, we have one, and areas of outstanding natural beauty adjacent to the Sillard. But why did they do that? Well, they were national parks. It wasn't complicated. They're also the most protected environments, pretty much, that we have in the country. So such protection made it very, very difficult, probably practically impossible, to take them forward as repository sites. So they were excluded. And at the end of the judgment um, of the Nirex case, and it's, if you search on Professor Mark Smyers' website, which is the only place you can find this, as far as I can see, the Nirex planning inspector, despite the fact that he criticised pretty much everything Nirex has done on site selection, or certainly a lot of it, he basically came out and said that the one thing that he agreed with was the fact that they'd excluded environmentally sensitive sites, including national parks, etc. And he also said that, that he believed they should turn their attention to the, the more promising sites elsewhere, and he meant the site the sites in primarily the southeast of England or the UK. And he's repeated this view very recently on TV. So was that good advice and very common sense and sensible advice followed? Well, I think we all know the answer to that. It wasn't. As per usual with governments, political expediency, etc. etc. They sit on it, they appoint a few committees, people get paid a lot of money, and then some bright spark comes up with the idea of voluntarism. And the last Labour government went along with it, basically. And in 2008, they published a paper. It's called Managing Radioactive Waste Safely. And as Stephen has said, the voluntarism model essentially invited communities to come forward and ask, essentially, whether they could have the privilege of hosting nuclear waste, waste repository. As we know, only, essentially, West Cumbria volunteered. So again, as Stephen said, what we've actually done in this country is that, I'm going to repeat what he said, we have done the exact opposite of every other civilised country, all of whom have looked for suitable geology first, 
And then once they've found suitable geology, they have tried to get community buy-in for that process. They have not asked for turkeys to vote for Christmas in the first place. Fortunately, we had some like this locally. Now, volunteerism, I can tell you, uh, is not a concept that's recognised by law. It's not recognised by any planning principles. It's a made-up concept. And as an example, if all of the Keswick community decided that times were a bit hard and it would be a good idea to have a Blackpool-style pleasure beach down on the foreshore of Durham Water, and we all thought that was a great idea, and every man and woman of us said, yeah, we want to do that, how much do you think that would help us in our planning application to the Lake Street National Park Authority? <laughs> in a week where, I know it's controversial to some extent, but nevertheless, I think even the most ardent objectors to the zip wire would rather have a zip wire than a nuclear waste repository. 